Hello Internet World, welcome to a new video on the Geek and Noise channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a NAS. What is NAS? Network Attached Storage is what a NAS is, and Synology makes some fantastic NAS devices. Uh, this video actually uh, really interests me because I've used a, a network attached storage device for many years and before I show you the very latest sort of home user model from Synology I want to just give you a bit of a background about how I use network attached storage and about how great it is. Now basically a NAS is a device like I've got here and you put either one, two, three, four uh, whatever capacity the device allows you, you you put your own hard drives or solid state drives in them and then instead of them connecting direct to your computer like I wouldn't plug this in via USB to my Mac for example, you plug it in via Ethernet and you plug it into your network and then it becomes a central storage location for all of your files. So you can put things like important documents on there uh, movies, photographs, and then all of the computers that are then connected to your network and smart devices as well uh, can actually access those files. So, for example, uh, my NAS I use as an archive for all of the videos I produce for the Geek and Noise channel, and I can then actually access those videos on my Mac Pro here, on my iMac. I can access the videos on my MacBook Pro. I can uh, watch them on a DLNA compatible device, maybe a large screen television. I can also access them whilst I'm not even in my office. I can access them from the other side of the world. It really does start to make sense when you've got that sort of central storage location. And in addition to that, if you get a NAS that will actually accommodate more than one hard drive, so two or more hard drives, then you can actually set it up so that it will mirror the data from one hard drive to the other. So that, that's the sort of a summary of how a NAS would work and how it could benefit you. Now this particular one was very kindly sent in to me by Synology free of charge for this video. I'm going to share with you my opinion. It's the brand new DiskStation DS220J. I'm going to give you a close up uh, look at it very shortly uh, uh, under the close up camera here. Before I do so, I'll just let you know how I've had this set up. I've been using it with the Toshiba N300. Uh, these are uh, hard drives that are specifically designed for network attached storage devices. They're really designed so that they can be running 24 seven, so 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, this is a three and a half inch drive. This happens to be the four terabyte model, uh, 7,200 RPM. They are great for using with uh, NAS drives. I've taken this back out of the enclosure just so I could show you it, but this is what the drive looks like. And they are just really a really good choice for using inside a NAS. So let me pop that to one side. You also get a quick install guide in, uh, in the box with the DS220J. This is the main box that it comes supplied in lists off some of the uh, features there, uh, the fact that you can use it for movies, mobile support as well, it's got great data security. I'll talk to you a little bit more in a short while about some of the added benefits of something like this because it's not just a sort of a simply for storing files on, you can do so much more with it. And then this is the DS220J itself. So I think we should take a, a closer look at this uh, under the uh, close-up camera so you get to see exactly what a device like this is capable of and, and, and really how well it's designed. So first of all let's just take a, a little look around the device. So it, it's primarily made of plastic we've got these rubberized feet on the bottom on th this uh, sort of front panel here we've got a status LED, a LAN LED and also disk activity LEDs and then you've got the main uh, power on off button little model number there. Where the Synology logo is on either side, there's actually slots cut in here, and this is like just their ventilation. So it's, it's a nice design, a nice way of them incorporating ventilation into the product. And then just on the back here, we have got the input for the power supply. We've got a Kensington lock. 
we've got some USB ports here as well. The USB ports are very useful indeed actually. You can use the USB ports uh, to further extend the storage capacity of the drive. So that's a really nice feature that I've included two USB ports on the back. And then we've got a gigabit ethernet port as well. We've also got just here uh, a fan. So it has got a fan. It's not that loud. Uh, you can hear it if you've got it in the same room as you, uh, but it, it's it's just a fan there to keep the hard drives cool inside. And it really isn't that loud. It's a very small fan. So you can see actually here, this is where you're going to put your, your hard drives in. So they slot into place and you've got the connectors, the SATA connectors just here. And then you've got little uh, grommeted screw holes, which you use the supplied screws to actually secure the hard drive into place. That's the fan you could see earlier. So these are sort of self-locating and it will accept uh, two drives. Uh, you can use three and a half inch SATA drives or you can use two and a half inch SATA drives. And they, they could be SSDs as well. To use two and a half inch, you needed an optional two and a half inch disc holder. Now, with regards to the process of the circuit boards underneath here, so it's sort of hidden away, uh, but what makes this a really good performer is it's got a quad core 1.4 gigahertz Realtek RTD1296 CPU. It's a 64 bit architecture, 512 megabytes of RAM in here as well. Uh, biggest single volume size is 108 terabytes. Uh, you're probably not going to get up to that in here. Uh, and the file system for the internal drives, uh, it supports EXT4. External drives, it supports a lot more. EXT3, 4, FAT, NTFS, HFS+, Plus, etc. Uh, the weight of the unit without drives installed, and including that cover I've already removed, is 0 0.88 kilograms. And the actual size just so you can see if you can accommodate this in your setup, is 165 millimeters by 100 millimeters by 225.5. Now, so let's uh, just talk to you a little bit more about this the, the case because when I took the case off, I was actually <laughs> I was actually on the wrong camera. Uh, so I want to show you the case going back on. Uh, I've got a new overhead camera up here, uh, which I'm still getting used to. Uh, using all the camera angles. So to put this back on, we simply align the two halves of the case, like so. So these meet very nicely. And then it simply just slots back together like this. There we go, that's back together. And if I had been using the right camera angles, you would have seen uh, that I was mentioning about the screw holes. So once you've got the hard drives installed in here, you would actually uh, put little screws in here. They're supplied inside another box and I'll show you what else you get inside the box in a short while. So so that's how it comes apart. I'm going to show you that one more time. So installing the drives very very easy. You simply separate the two halves. It comes apart like that and then you're into that internal tray which accepts on this particular model the DS220J accepts up to two drives. Three and a half inch straight out of the box or two and a half inch if you have the adapters. And it's a very nice compact, very nicely designed unit. It looks very nice indeed and, and a really great performer. Now, let's show you what you get inside the accessory box. So you do get an accessory box to, to get everything up and running. So let's show you what you get inside here. So inside this box, let's just open this up. Oh, here we go, it opens up this way. Now, this is a review model, so admittedly I got a European power cable. You would need a, a three pin one. Uh, they're readily available, but yours, if you buy it in the UK, you should get it with a three pin cable, so I haven't really used that. Uh, this is how it all comes presented to you in the box, really nicely presented. So it's a multi voltage power supply. This plugs into the back of the unit and then this plugs into the power cable. You get some little screws here. Um, these are used for uh, mounting the uh, hard drives. You get uh, some additional screws here, an additional bracket uh, in the box as well, and you also get some little screws for 
uh, cl the plastic case. This is for the actual enclosure. And then, to get you up and running, you also get an Ethernet cable. So everything you need to get you up and running actually inside the box, which I think is uh, is really good, that you, you don't need to buy any additional things. Uh, some manufacturers, you'd actually buy the NAS device, and then you'd still have to get an Ethernet cable, which I think is a, a bit of a joke, but with Synology, they include the Ethernet cable inside the box. So, I mentioned to you, you can actually do so much more than just install files on here. And this is where Synology, with their disk station manager software, have kept improving the front end of the software time after time after time. It not only allows you to see the health of the drives, do all the setup, set up users. You can even set up a power up and power down schedule to save energy. But the disk station manager software also allows you to install apps. And you can install apps to extend the functionality of this. You've got things like Surveillance Station, which will work with uh, security cameras. You've got uh, email servers. You've got download uh, software as well, so that you can actually set up a download going on your NAS, turn off your computer, and the NAS handles the download. Uh, you've got fo uh, photo uh, applications as well. You've also, you've also got things like backup software, so you could actually back up to your NAS quite easily from your computer, but you can even set up a backup schedule to back up from one NAS to a NAS that's off-site. So there's so much more you can do with this apart from just store files on it. And the software is superb. I've used the Disk Station Manager software for many, many years, and it's so ele elegantly set out that it makes using this, setting up and using it, day to day an absolute breeze and then once you've got it set up you don't have to use the disk station manager software I for example use Mac so these are my couple of Macs behind me here and I can use uh, the finder to actually mount the volumes or on here like my little sort of uh, shared storage areas on here I can mount them uh, as uh, sort of shares or folders on my desktop and then I can put files in them, access files, etc., as though this was a local hard drive. So it's very, very easy to, to actually put files and pull files off of the hard drives in here. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier as well, with this one you can put two hard drives in, so I could have the two hard drives sort of used using their full capacity and uh, the best speed, so data is shared across them, or I can mirror the hard drive, so one hard drive all of the data is actually backed up and mirrored onto the second hard drive. So if one hard drive fails, I don't lose any of the data. Phew, I hope that has helped you. This is a great little performer, and it's one of the sort of entry-level models in the Synology range. I can highly recommend it because it's nice and affordable. You can add a small, you don't have to use the four terabyte Toshiba drives that I showed you here. You could use a, a one couple of one terabyte ones to start off with, uh, and that gets you a really good entry level into experiencing how useful having a NAS is. is. Uh, I've left links in the video description to where you can actually pick up this particular model for yourself. I've also left a link down there to the Synology website, so please do check that out. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, as always, please do hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Now, one more thing, if you're still watching all the way to the end of this video, if you enjoyed the overhead camera, albeit I did, my, I did mess up giving you the wrong angles at the beginning of the video, uh, but if you did enjoy uh, the overhead camera, please do let me know. Uh, this is actually a Nikon Z50 and I've just done the unboxing on the channel and I've got it rigged up for the overhead camera. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you think as well in the comment section. That really is it. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I really do appreciate you uh, tuning in. I will see you all in another video very, very soon.